So this section is about time frequency analysis. And uh, if you've done time frequency uh, analysis in the past, this might be a bit boring. But it, it could also be a good uh, refresher. And every, sing every time frequency analysis uh, presentation is different anyway, because you can look at it from so many angles. So you must still learn something. So this is how uh, usually uh, brainwave, EEG brainwaves are defined. You have very low frequencies, 0 0.5 to 2 hertz uh, called delta, 4 to 7 hertz called theta, 9 to 11 alpha, and you have alpha low, alpha high, beta 18 to 21, and gamma 30 to 60. And it depends on the offers, and uh, usually, if you write a paper, it's always better to put the exact frequency range you mean because different offer mean different things. And obviously, these are idealized uh, uh, sinusoids. The real brain waves look more like this. So here's low delta, here's delta, and you can see a bit of beta right here. Theta is a little bit faster here, five oscillations per second. Alpha would be higher amplitude and about 10 oscillations per second, and beta would probably look something like this. And gamma, you're usually not able to see it on the, on, uh, when you just look at the raw data waves. You will have to filter the data. So here we're moving to the theory. So here's a sinusoid at 2 hertz, a sinusoid at 10 hertz, sinusoid at 20 hertz. We do this plus this plus this, and we get this signal. So this is a mixture of these three signals. And basically what you do then is that you compute the power spectrum and you recover. So you, you get three peaks, one as, at 2 hertz, one at 10 hertz, one at 20 hertz. And that's exactly the signal you put in. So this is, this is what the power spectrum is for, is to try to uncover the underlying uh, uh, frequencies in the signal. This is a... Uh, this is time domain, EG, and he, X here is the time, and F to X is the uh, EG amplitude. And uh, basically, when you do a frequency decomposition, it's going to decompose at a different, the signal at different frequencies with different amplitude. So uh, we would have here, for instance, this signal corresponds to uh, uh, some power at this frequency, so this is going to be higher amplitude than uh, this, for instance. This is in the trough, so this is, this is very low amplitude at this frequency. And, and so this is how you can, you can uh, uh, see your signal. This peaks here represents the amplitude of different frequencies. And, and when you combine all these, all these uh, sinusoids here, you can recover the uh, original signal. You, there is one more caveat here, and it's the, the relative offset here at the beginning. It's called the phase. So you have both the amplitude and the phase, and when you recombine all of these, you can recover your original signal. This is your uh, original uh, signal. So this is a dual representation of your signal. Your signal can be represented in the time domain like this, or it can be represented in the frequency domain like, like this, where you just have two information. You have the original offset here of the first uh, peak of the sinusoids, and then you have the amplitude of the sinusoid. <coughs> now, uh, so this is our uh, EEG signal. And what we're going to do, we're just going to select the window. And we're going to try to do uh, time frequency decomposition on uh, this moving window. So we use a sinusoid, and then we multiply it by a Gaussian to obtain a tapered sinusoid. And what I'm going to say here uh, is more for uh, the uh, classical Fourier transform, and then we're going to talk about wavelets. So uh, here is my EEG signal, idealized EEG signal. And here is my tapered sinusoid, and basically, uh, I get two of them. I get one for the sinusoid and one for the cosine. And uh, I have what I call a real and imaginary part. And if you don't remember real and imaginary number, uh, it's not that important. You just have to uh, remember that this here 
uh, this, the convolution of this with the data is going to give me uh, the axis on uh, the value on the first axis, and the convolution of this with the data is going to value on the second axis. So here I have my signal, and I'm going to multiply by the real part of my uh, take per sinusoid. So here you see the peaks are aligned, so I multiply this number by this number, and I get a positive number. Here the negative, uh, the negative peaks are aligned as well, so I multiply this by this, I'm going to get a, a positive number as well. So I multiply all of these numbers by all of these numbers, one by one here, and I sum over all of these numbers, this is what's called a convolution, and uh, I get a large positive number just because I have perfect alignment. Here, on the contrary, here I have zero, so I multiply zero by the maximum peak, and I get zero. And here I have a negative part, and here I have a positive part, and you can see that this is symmetric, so this, when I multiply this by the signal, and this by the signal, they're going to cancel out. So when I multiply all of these numbers, some will be positive, some will be negative, and in the end I do the sum, I'm going to obtain zero. So the axis right there, I'm going to have a large positive number on this axis, and on the ordinate, I'm going to have zero. So this is convolving with this specific signal. Now I move my window a little bit, and my signal changed a little bit as well. So this is now in my signal, you can see the amplitude is smaller. And now I'm going to multiply, again, exactly the same tapered sinusoid with my signal. Now it's aligned with zero, so I'm going to multiply this positive value with zero. It's going to give me zero. And uh, you can see this is symmetric, and this is anti-symmetric. So when I multiply this number by the signal and this number by the signal, they're going to cancel each other. One will be positive, the other one will be negative. So when I do the convolution, I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to get zero on this axis, zero on the real axis. Uh, however, with the imaginary part, you can see that now the signals are aligned. So I multiply this positive number by this positive number, this negative number by this negative number. I do the sum for all the numbers, and I get a positive number. And now this is my time frequency estimate. And uh, you can see here the length is smaller than here. Why? Because my signal is of lower amplitude. So the length, the length of your vector indicates the amplitude of uh, the signal. And the orientation of the vector uh, indicates what we call the phase. So it's the right phase of your signal with your uh, tapered sinusoid. So let's, let's do a last example. Now I have a third signal, and uh, I'm not crossing here at zero. I'm not crossing on the peak. I'm crossing in the middle. So I'm going to convolve this uh, real part with the signal. I'm going to have a small positive number. I'm going to convolve this imaginary part with the signal. I'm going to have a small imaginary number. And this is basically what I get. So I get uh, orientation here, which is in between uh, the, the, this axis and the vertical axis. And the length here still indicates the amplitude of the signal. And you might say, well, this is. This is oversimplified, but it's exactly uh, what uh, uh, time frequency decomposition is. This is how to compute a discrete Fourier transform. This is the MATLAB function. This actually, these four lines are actually going to compute your uh, discrete Fourier transform. And here we don't have the uh, cosine and the sine. We just use the exponential. If you remember your classes from high school, uh, you can convert exponential of an uh, imaginary number to a cosine and a sine part, and you can convolve it uh, uh, with your signal. So that's exactly what we did, and we loop our frequency, we do all the frequencies, and uh, we can compute our uh, discrete Fourier transform, so the amplitude at each frequency and the phase at each frequency, and all of these numbers here will be uh, complex. Does anybody know the difference between the discrete Fourier transform the numerical difference between the discrete Fourier transform and the fast Fourier transform? I always ask this question. It's, it's, there is, uh, 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 the for fast Fourier transform is faster. That's the, that's the <laughs> only numerical uh, difference between the two. It just have, uh, the algorithm for the fast Fourier transform is a bit more complex because it uses harmonics between frequencies, so it doesn't have to recompute everything. This, this takes more time to compute because it does every single frequency one by one. 
in the fast wave transform, when you have the amplitude at 4 hertz, you have some information about the amplitude at 8 hertz, etc.